views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This show's audio was via a Skype call. Let's talk about your juicy love with me, Luna Drake. We explore relationships, dating, sacred union, communication, conscious love, healthy boundaries, and much more. As a dating and relationship coach for over five years, with a background in shamanic healing and metaphysical work, I've helped men and women, young and old, from all walks of life. My mission is to increase peace, joy, and love on planet Earth. So listen in and stay juicy. All right, all right. Welcome to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake. And today joining me is my partner, Joe. Hello, everybody. All right. So uh, today we're going to talk about self-love, divine love, and healing the human heart. And uh, this is a topic that was, well, is really near and dear to my heart because honestly, uh, getting to a place where I really loved myself was really challenging for me. And it took me a long time. I want to say like well into my 30s before I got to the place where I could authentically love myself. And, uh, you know, as I'm sure most people would agree, being able to love yourself is really important to have any kind of healthy relationship. And um, one of the, well, one of the things that helped me in this process um, is a journey, uh, like a shamanic journey, and then a mandala that I created based on that journey. And I know I've talked about my mandala process. I don't want to get into all the details. But basically, I, in shamanic journey, I was given a, a vision of a, a circle, like, like a mandala. And in the center was a blue rose. It was like a, a mystical rose. And it was it represented basically like divine love and self-love and uh around the rows in four there were four other four hearts and one was a uh shattered heart it was like broken into pieces on um, one of them was a bruised heart um you know just kind of black and blue kind of hurt one of them was a icy blue heart kind of frozen and then one of them, the fourth one, was a really like glowing, open, receptive heart. It was, uh, you know, glowing with, um, you know, self-love and divine love. And um, this journey was really profound for me. And it helped me realize that uh, that it wasn't selfish to love myself, <laughs> Um, and, uh, so anyway, I just wanted to talk about some of those themes today. So Joe, what is this? I don't know. Does this bring up anything for you? Um, I, well, we don't, <clears throat> it's certainly not selfish to love yourself. Love is not selfish by design. You know, yeah. lo- love, uh, is beyond those kinds of qualities. Now there's a, you can have a selfish interest in yourself, but that's not love. Right. A lot of people that are the more the most fixated on themselves really have yet to love themselves. Right. You know, you think of like a classic narcissist, somebody who's really fixated on themselves. And you know, we have all kinds of great examples these days that we can look at. And, uh, you know, you really wonder how much love is there. Right. Right. Yeah, you know, it's almost like if you're filled up with like a prideful self-interest, there's no room for self-love. Right, because there's always comparison to the outside. Um, and so this is some of some of what I wrote after that journey, kind of what came out of that. And it it was pain, wounding, and heartache come from ego attachment and expecting love and emotional fulfillment from someone or something 
outside ourselves and our personal connection to spirit. So like divine love, divine connection. If we have healthy self-love, then we can approach life and those around us with an open heart, free of unhealthy expectations and needy demands. Yet we are also able to identify and ask for what we want and how we want to be in relationship. So that was, um, it took me a long time to like really get this, you know? Um, Well, I have a feeling it's probably remains on. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, None of this describes a place that you get to. It describes a process you use to constantly sharpen and sharpen and sharpen. And it's never, it's never finished being sharpened. Right. Right. Yeah. But I think, I, I think we can get to a place or at least luckily I have, you know, of like being able to more frequently be in a place where I can love myself and, Kind of, I, I think for me, that's also been learning about boundaries and being able to stand stand up for my own boundaries and what identify my own desires, for example, you know, like um, and being able to be like really okay with that, as as opposed to um, honestly, for a lot of my life, I felt like I implicitly like I wasn't allowed to have needs so to speak or mm-hmm. like it wasn't okay to to have like personal needs or desires well i know it's something a lot of men uh carry for a long time in, yeah in a big way. yeah and, and it's something our society encourages yeah absolutely absolutely um and it, i guess one of the reasons that this topic in general like you know self-love and healing the human heart has come up recently is you know, I was really impacted by the uh, by the you know prominent suicides that we've experienced recently. You know, like Anthony Bourdain and Kate Spade, and you think about you know, I mean, those are two people that certainly I would have thought, dude, they made it. You know, they mm-hmm. had everything that somebody could want. You know, and they had you know fame, fortune, all the. Ex- cool experiences you could you could want and yet obviously they were hurting on the inside you know Mm -hmm. and I mean I know you know I know myself as with a lot of people you know (laughs) I struggled with depression for a long time and part of that healing process was learning to love myself and to prioritize my own my own needs um, and to be able to to voice those, you know, to to come to at least enough of a place of self love where I could prioritize my own needs enough to to voice it and make them a priority, uh, which I think is important for everybody to do. Um, so, uh, and I I just know that that you know depression is so rampant out mm-hmm. there in the world that anything I feel like we can do to help people with that is, uh, is good work, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, and certainly of course, you know, being able to, to be in a place of loving yourself would help you have a, a healthy relationship because I think you can't, if you don't fundamentally love yourself, then any kind of relationship that you're going to be in is going to be, like codependent or it's going to be warped in some way. It's going to involve an element of sacrifice and compromise that's unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. And that fundamentally kind of sabotages the relationship. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, So um, one of the things that I, as I was reflecting on this, the just recently, um, (laughs) I, cause I kind of, I went back to that, to that journey and I kind of reopened it up and then was like, okay, well, what else can I develop from here? And I got some, I got some kind of messages kind of downloaded, you know, for the, the icy heart, the shattered heart and the bruised heart. And I thought that in this show, we could kind of go into, go into that, you know, a bit. Sounds good. Um, so, uh, 
with the icy heart, you know, I got like, it's closed and cold, you know, it's shut down, it's inaccessible, distant. Um, and there's even, I think, in a lot of the cases with people who are really closed down emotionally, there's a sense of like being calculating or, you know, cold, of course. Um, and so what I thought is that the medicine for that, for that condition would be like being able to warm to human emotion and human contact. So I, I think about like innocence as being a an antidote, you know, or contact with innocence and being able to open up. So like, you know, babies, puppies, children, you know, are all things that are not, are the kind of the opposite of like a really closed down cold heart, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, um, uh, having contact, even just having a pet, honestly, I think is like really good. I mean, there's been a lot of studies that show that people who have pets tend to live longer, tend to be healthier, you know, that kind of thing. And I think I suspect that as because that helps you keep your heart open and healthy, you're less likely to kind of close down and shut off from other people, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, or I think about, you know, when things get a little stressful for us, we take a muffin break. Yes. Which uh, muffin would be the name of our cat. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, we love muffin. But, you know, he does good work for us to help keep us warm and flowing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Um, yeah. And so also what I wrote is, you know, connecting with emotion in a way that's non-threatening, I think is really important for people who have kind of shut down their emotional center, you know, their heart. Um, it, Cause these, and I, I wrote, these souls have experienced loss and hurt when they have allowed themselves to experience emotion. So they need to be rehabilitated to emotions and intimacy in a way that feels safe. So I think, um, you know, being able to, um, to create that safety as they connect with their own emotions and their own heart and then kind of gently open that up is really important. Oh, and I'm getting a message here that it's uh, time to go to break. So um, we will be right back in just a few minutes. Introducing the Lucid Planet, a digital gathering place featuring cutting-edge, high-vibrational content that will empower and inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. Visit the Lucid Planet today to stimulate your mind, body, and soul as you connect with a global community of like-minded people. The Lucid Planet is edited by renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly Neff, who is here to help you cope with anxiety, connect to your higher purpose, uncover your true passions, and live your dreams. Dr. Kelly's fresh, compassionate perspective emphasizes growth, transformation, healing, and thriving, even in the face of adversity. Say goodbye to bad news and low vibrational media for good and become part of the larger collective of people working together to navigate the global shift of consciousness and transform the world from within. Join the planet, the Lucid Planet. Visit thelucidplanet.com. Welcome home. Please join us for a transformational conference with five, that's right, five of the leading pioneers in the fields of science and spirituality, all in one place. Join best-selling authors and teachers, Greg Braden, Dr. Bruce Lipton, Lynn McTaggart, Dr. Joe Dispenza, and Lee Carroll in both individual workshops as well as a weekend of keynote presentations and panel discussions. At this extraordinary event, you'll get to experience some of the brightest leaders of our world today, empowering you with groundbreaking new information, deep wisdom, and practical tools to transform your life. Come connect with others and expand your consciousness in beautiful Nanaimo on Vancouver Island in British Columbia, June 14th through 19th. For more information or to register for what some are expecting to be one of the best conferences of 2018, visit shalohaproductions.com. That's S-H-A-L-O-H-A productions.com or visit the individual speakers' websites. 
Conscious Confidence Radio, a timeless wisdom with Sarah Main. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio and join Sarah on an adventurous journey to the deeper level of meaning to move beyond today's world of constant change, confusion, and uncertainty beyond the shadow of fear. This hit show explores key concepts such as confidence, values and attitude in a dynamic way to learn more about sarah and her work visit sarahmain.com the truth is funny shift happens with colette marie stefan is excited to welcome karen benton as a monthly guest host tune in on the third wednesday of each month at 8 a.m pacific time to regain confidence and trust in your capacity to create change in your life your health your family and your well-being karen benton is a mother nurse practitioner certified body talk practitioner franklin method instructor and owner of limitless living llc for more information about karen visit karenbenton.com all right uh, i guess we're back um it's me una drake and i'm here today with uh joe melberg my partner and it's me <laughs> And uh, we are talking about uh, self-love, divine love, and healing the human heart. And uh, we've um, talked about, uh, in the first part of the show, we talked about uh, four kind of types of conditions of the human heart. And uh, there's the icy heart that's cold and closed down. There's the shattered heart that's been just broken uh, broken to pieces, and then the bruised heart, you know, that's been hurt. And then the fourth type is the healed heart, you know, the, the heart that's open and receptive and, and glowing and healthy. Uh, and so uh, we talked in the first part a little bit about how to heal the icy heart. And uh, now I want to get into healing the shattered heart. Um, and, and also... Um, I guess I should say uh, I'm Una Drake, and uh, this is Your Juicy Love with Una Drake, and uh, you can learn more about me on my website, unadrake.com. So, all right, so the shattered heart. So this is, a, you know, a heart that's broken, almost destroyed. You know, people in this state, you know, typically feel like they've given up or almost given up. Uh, you know, it's despair, uh, you know, again, depression, like we were talking about before the before the break. Um, and so what is the medicine for this? Um, you know, I know I've certainly experienced feeling like this um, many, well, several times at least in, in my life. And uh, I think the medicine for someone with a shattered heart is, you know, healing. You know, someone who has a shattered heart needs to heal. They need to grow stronger. And I think it, a lot of it involves gentleness towards self. And um, what can help with this is being in a gentle environment so that you can regain strength. Um, it's comparable to like nursing a very ill person back to health. You know, you wouldn't put them in a loud environment or like a really um, chaotic environment you need to give people who are healing, you know, just rest, a place where they can recuperate, a place where it's really calm. And I think someone who has a shattered heart, uh, you know, whether that's from a breakup, whether that's from, you know, just long-term depression or... Uh, really any kind of loss. Any kind of loss or trauma, you know. Um, you need to give yourself time to heal. That's really, really important, and it's it's okay to uh, you know to create space for yourself to do that. Um, so, I really like the part on um, being more gentle towards yourself because I feel like you know our society values self discipline and independence and these things so much that a lot of people feel that you know to have weakness or to make space to heal is to be weak, you know, that if I slow down, I go down kind of mentality where, you know, they end up whipping themselves through their days. Right. Now, like, you wouldn't treat your pet that way. You wouldn't, tr uh, hopefully, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. just think, think of, think of the uh, archetype of the old cuss whipping a donkey down the road. 
you know? Right. And you don't want to be doing that with yourself, with your own heart. That's yeah. not good. But you were saying <laughs> before that there's still a place for some self-discipline in here. Oh, right. Yeah. We were talking just earlier about um, kind of the difference between, like, basically being too hard on yourself, like almost like abusing yourself and not, not treating yourself with love and respect versus having self-discipline. I think there is still a place for self-discipline um, because, uh, you know, certainly if you want to get stuff done, if you're a goal-oriented person like me, you know, you, you do need to have self-discipline to get stuff done in the world. And, and neglect um, is a form of abuse. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. Neglect or, you know, just being overindulgent in things that uh, that can harm you in overabundance, you know, um, eating too much, having too much sugar, too much alcohol, too much, you know, whatever it is, is certainly, you know, not good for your body. It's not good for yourself. So, um, so I think it's, it's important to have moderation. But we're talking about someone with like the shattered heart. And I think that if you're in a situation where you are feeling like really broken, you know, really shattered, then, um, then it's a situation like, I think you almost have to treat yourself kind of like you would treat someone who is very, very ill, you know, someone on their deathbed, you need to give them, need to give yourself space, you know, quiet, calm. And, um, I think maybe, save the self-discipline even, or, you know, to a certain degree, like for after you've regained enough strength to have that kind of rigor, you know? I was thinking, you know, lots of treats. Oh. But not, you know, not excess, but um, anything to kind of bring the pieces together, to bring the joy back into life. You know, joy seems like the antidote you're describing in some ways. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, calm and, and peace, like recovery and recuperation and, and, and joy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, so the next thing that I wrote uh, is that these souls need to learn to be kind to themselves and give themselves the love they have sought from others and have been denied. And overgiving can lead to depletion. So I think a lot of times people who have this kind of brokenness, this shattered heart, they've almost given too much, expecting to get what they need back from someone else or another situation, but they didn't get it, you know? And that and by overgiving to a, especially to a source that's not giving back to you can lead to just depletion. Um and can lead to just burnout and brokenness. So, you know, these souls need to learn to give to themselves as well as to others. And it's kind of the idea of like putting on your own oxygen mask first. Um, you know, I'm thinking of people in, uh, say, some jobs, for example. You know, a lot of times people in jobs that require a lot, but you know, people can easily get burned out, especially if they're not getting the support or the recognition or whatever they need back in order to keep on giving at those high levels. I'm thinking of like, say, some teachers, for example, you know, teachers in very difficult um, environments where they're not getting the support that they need. Um, there's high burnout rates in a lot of situations where the teachers aren't supported enough or um, caregivers, you know, caregivers for like family members who are, you know, injured or who have like long-term illnesses, a lot of times all the focus goes to the person who's ill, which is, of course, I mean, that's natural. You know, they're the person who have, who's ill, but the, the caregiver kind of behind the scenes is at high risk of burnout as well. And, um, that, you know, the caregivers need to be cared for, <laughs> too. <laughs> and um, otherwise, it can just lead to massive depletion and burnout. Um, so uh, I think it's really important to keep that in mind. And, um, you know, being in the situation of having, you know, a shattered heart or, you know, overcoming burnout, that's a serious situation. And, you know, from a shamanic perspective, I mean, that's like, that's like 
soul loss. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you know, you really need to look after yourself and make sure that you can come back to a place of real wholeness. And, uh, you know, again, part of that is learning to love yourself so that you can prioritize. Well, first of all, even recognize and understand that you have needs. It's okay to have needs. It's okay to ask for what you need. And then, you know, to be able to, you know, take action to make sure that you get that, you know, that you don't always get put on the back burner, that you're not always um, putting yourself last. That's really, really important in this process. So, um, so it uh, looks like we're coming up to a break now. Um, again, I'm Una Drake. This is Joe Melberg. And um, you can find out more about me on my website, unadrake.com, U-N-A-D-R-A-K-E.com. And uh, we are going to go to break. We'll be right back. And we're going to talk about healing the bruised heart and how to heal your own heart so that you can be have self-love, be connected to divine love, and be healthy and whole so you can have the relationship and the love that you really want. Thank you. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Laura Richer, host of On The Verge Radio. Sometimes you hear encouraging messages like transform your life now, become empowered, create the life you crave, and it all seems overwhelming and you're not sure where to start. I'm here to tell you that self-improvement is not always fun and easy, but it is always worth it. The path to creating positive changes begins with releasing the things that have been holding you back. Then you can create a life that inspires you. I know this because I've done it. You can find out more about what I do by visiting my website, seattlehealinghypnosis.com. I look forward to supporting you on your journey. This is Debbie Pokornik with a moment for standing in your power. Self-control begins with noticing how different feelings present themselves in your body. When you're feeling sensitive, for example, your chin might quiver, tears might well up in your eyes, and your voice might catch in your throat. Anger, on the other hand, might appear as tension in your jaw, back, or arms, along with clenched fists, heat in the upper torso, scowling, and a strong desire to yell. The more aware you become of your body cues, the easier it will be to recognize when you're on the road to disaster. Choose the emotions that cause you problems, then start noticing and logging the body cues that come with them. For information and to work with Debbie, visit EmpoweringNRG.com. That's EmpoweringNRG.com. Charlene Hess is a red-headed powerhouse of energy, love, and light. As a hairstylist, personal trainer, and life coach, she empowers people to develop a deeper connection with themselves mentally, emotionally, and physically. Join Charlene the third Friday of each month on The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Get ready to experience your highest self, find your purpose, and discover your calling. You, too, can become unstoppable, shining your light and sharing your gift. Visit Charlene at charlenehess.com. Love Living Radio Ignite Your Whole Being with Emily Perkins is a show for those looking to explore the sparkling magnificence of their inner selves. Tune in every second and fourth Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific as Emily sheds a radiant light of love on the beauty and power that resides within you. Discussing love in all its forms through conversations that provoke awareness, curiosity, and expansion, Emily shares the unlimited power of love. For more information or to listen to this show, visit lovelivingholistics.com. Stay juicy. Tune in to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, co-hosting monthly with Dr. Pat, and every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. My show, Your Juicy Love, helps you find the dynamic, life-affirming love you've always wanted. Transform your relationships and bring peace, joy, and juicy, juicy love to planet Earth. For more information, visit unadrake.com. This is Your Juicy Love with Una Drake. <laughs> and um, today we're talking about self-love, divine love, and healing the human heart. 
And uh, we've been talking about uh, the four kind of archetypes of, of conditions of the human heart that I identified in a shamanic journey years ago. And I've um, re-gotten into this material because it seems like healing the human heart is, to me, it just strikes me as more relevant than ever, especially in light of the recent, uh, recent uh, you know, very well-known uh, suicides that you know, Anthony Bourdain, Kate Spade, and just, um, it just seems like there's a lot of, uh, a lot of despair, a lot of hurting out there in the world. And it just made me think of, of this journey that I, that I had. And so I've kind of dived back into that material and I've redeveloped some of it. And, um, so we're going to talk about how do you, in the, in the first part of the show, we talked about healing the icy heart we just got done talking about healing the shattered heart, and now we're going to talk about healing the bruised heart. And so the bruised heart, these are kind of people or like a condition, you know, of being like kind of grumpy, jaded, hurt, complaining, distrustful. Um, how would you describe it? Like kind of the... My dad. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, um... I, th I think you've described it well. And this isn't one that I know as much about or experience as often. I tend to be more of an icy or a shatter type. So mm -hmm. when, when I go into these kinds of modes. Right, the, right. The bruised heart one, not as much. So I'm actually more curious about uh, where this takes us. Okay. Yeah. Um, well... Okay, so what I what I wrote down again, this is just when I kind of went back into this this vision or this journey and kind of downloaded more information about it. Uh, this was just a few days ago, and the medicine is seeing the self in others and service to others. So these souls tend to be preoccupied with their own pain and their own needs and desires. They are miffed that the world is not giving them exactly what they think they deserve. They need to get outside themselves and start seeing the world through the eyes of others. They need to serve those less fortunate and develop humility and gratitude. Uh, so I think that, um, you know, sometimes with a, with a bruised heart, there can be kind of a myopic attitude where it's just too much of a focus on the self and our and the, our own pain and discomfort in the moment and you know being bruised or hurt can do that you know if you say like stub your toe you're going to be thinking about your toe for a while you know until you're not necessarily going to be thinking about you know somebody else and what they're going through your attention isn't that funny too by the way when you stub your toe you're trying so hard to protect it and you're so self you're so conscious of it and you think I don't want to hit that toe again. I don't want to hit that toe again. You invariably hit that toe like three more times that day. A lot of times, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because that's that's where your attention going is going. It's not uh you know, so you're spending so much time thinking about it that you're probably throwing yourself off balance or you're you know yeah, is you're just setting yourself up for um more hurt basically you know i heard somebody very wise uh, you know, the shinto priest recently tell me that uh, the manifestation rule doesn't care if you're saying not this or this like if you're saying you know no i don't want to get sick no i don't want to get sick that's yeah not going to manifest health that's just going to manifest sick yeah because the universe doesn't hear negatives the yeah. universe only hears in the positive yeah exactly um so I think with people with a bruised heart, like I think what you're saying is that they're only focused on their own pain. And so if all you're doing is focusing on your own pain and your discomfort, well, then using the law of attraction, you know, then the universe is just going to feed you what you're already a match for, what you're already experiencing. And if what you're experiencing is hurt, then you're going to get more hurt. <laughs> and of course, you know, was it the center, your heart? And, and if you, may, you know, you organize your life around your center. So, you know, imagine structuring your life around this hurt. Uh-huh. Right. Like, Why well, you're just setting up a big funnel of bad times. 
Right, right. And I think that's that's why the medicine is to focus outward. So you're not just concerned with your own your own kind of bruised feelings or emotions, but you're if you can place your focus on other people and serving others, I think inherently that helps make us more grateful for the gifts that we already have. I mean, I know myself when I think about you know, certainly I can think of a long list of things that I wish were different in my own little life, blah, 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 you know. But when I think about other people and the challenges that they're facing and I immediately become aware of how lucky and blessed, miraculously blessed my life really is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so I think like being able to um, put our focus outside of ourselves can really help us kind of get get over ourselves. Um, and so I also wrote, a leadership and service work would be very good for these souls. Mm. Providing to others what they believe they lack will show them the riches and gifts they already have but don't yet recognize. Ultimately, these souls are seeing themselves through a distorted mirror or they are failing to look at the mirror in the first place. By serving others, they will heal themselves. And I think there's really a lot of truth in that. I wrote it myself, but <laughs> or downloaded it. But um, anyway, uh, I, I think there is there is truth in that. You know, I think um, once we kind of get out of our own little cocoon of pain and can look at other people, then um, then. Again, we can start counting our own blessings. We can start, you know, realizing what we have in common with others as opposed to just how other people have hurt us. And, um, you know, it really opens up the world. I like the mirror metaphor a lot. I was thinking about the cognitive test or it's a cognitive standard that they do in their working with animals, which is to see if an animal recognizes its own reflection in a mirror. Mm -hmm. I was thinking what you've described is an interesting emotional cognitive level here of would you recognize yourself emotionally in a mirror oh or would you even look you know interesting like, you, know, you try to show a cat itself in a mirror and it won't look it's like oh, okay you know, they won't do it uh-huh. you know, they'll, they'll look anywhere but the mirror yeah i'm over here i'm over here no no they're not going to do it uh-huh um because they think it's another cat and they don't want to make eye contact and start a fight oh, okay so like the one time you've seen muffin looking at his own reflection he started batting at the mirror uh-huh. He's trying to get into a fight. Okay. You know, and if I imagine people doing that emotionally, it's really funny. Oh. Just not looking in the mirror, not even recognizing themselves when they do. Right, right. Oh, that's fascinating. Because I really feel like every time, every encounter, especially with another person, really is a mirror of ourselves. Or we can kind of look at it that way. Especially especially if we um if something about the other person pisses us off <laughs> then you know that you're looking at a reflection you know mm-hmm. and um and uh well i mean honestly if 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 what you see in the other person is um is reflecting you know if you're like oh they're so beautiful they're so wonderful well then anything that you see in somebody else you also see in yourself okay so it's a good exercise to try to like see the best in other people because that automatically implies that you're seeing the best in yourself at least you know pretty much um or is it that's what so, you're bringing forward yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's 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 at least fun to play with okay so uh you know whether whether you're seeing uh, whether you're seeing um, you know faults and limitations in other people, or whether you're seeing them as you know beautiful and you know wonderful and kind and gracious. Uh, think about how that reflects in your own experience. Now it's not, you know not across the board. Some people are just uh, people you'd rather not spend time with, <laughs> and that's okay. Um, but, uh, it's, it's an interesting exercise, I think. Um, and also I think it's, um, and I realize that we do have to go to break soon, but, uh, I think it's an interesting 
it's, it can be a very interesting exercise to try to give to other people what you feel that you lack yourself. And I think that doing that can can really help heal us at a deep level. Because if you're able to give a gift to someone else, then you're automatically going to kind of lay the groundwork for that to flow to you as well. So if you feel like you lack love or, or understanding, you know, I'm not understood, nobody loves me. But if you are able to give a gift of, say, understanding, like deeply listening to another person and, uh, you know, really recognizing another person and showing another person love and kindness, you're, you've like many, many times multiplied your chances of getting that back in your own life. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like we're going to have to go to a break, but we will come back with more. I'm Una Drake. This is Joe Milberg, and this is you're listening to Your Juicy Love, and we'll be right back. Thank you. traveling most of your day do you want to take transformation talk radio with you anywhere you go well guess what there's an app for that just go to the app store on your apple device or the google play store on your android and search transformation talk radio catch all of our live shows no matter where you are thanks for listening Could you swim with sharks? Is fear holding you back from living your life? The time is now to jump in and be courageous. Shelly Ryan has created a retreat to help you move past your fears with confidence. Join her June 30th through July 7th in Mexico. Have some fun, relax. Plus, you'll have the opportunity to be courageous with a whale and shark adventure. For more information, visit yournextchaptercoaching.com. Are you looking for the perfect setting for your next workshop or retreat? At Spirit Fire Meditative Retreat Center, cultivating consciousness is what we do best. Our guests count on us to create an atmosphere that supports serenity and well-being. We lead from the heart and create space for the mind. Freshly prepared meals designed with local and organic ingredients, 95 acres of beautiful woods and pastures, and a facility built with green in mind. This is what you'll find at Spirit Fire. For more information, visit spiritfireretreatcenter.com. Healing has a ripple effect. One person's healing affects everyone around them. This is where the power of sharing our stories can be so important. Tune in to Playing on the Edge Radio with Megan Edge each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Megan provides you with ways of sustaining radical and powerful changes in your life. Enact the power of radical change. To find out more about Megan Edge, visit her website at meganedge.ca. Are you ready to attract abundance, release stress, look and feel younger, all from your smartphone? Get Pure Light, a free mobile app with audios that transmit powerful frequencies to shift anything in your life. Created by some of the world's top energy healers, these audios have created miracles, often quickly. Enjoy the latest in conscious technology and download Pure Light today. To find out more, visit purelightaudio.com. Right, all right, we're back. You're listening to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake, and I'm here today with my partner, Joe Melberg. Howdy. (laughs) All right. Um, And today we're talking about healing the human heart through self-love and divine love. And earlier in the show, if you missed it, we were talking about the icy heart, the shattered heart, and the bruised heart and how to heal those, those say archetypes of the hurting heart. In in this last segment, let's talk about the healed heart, the healthy heart, the glowing heart, the heart that's bathed in self-love and divine love. Um, Cause that's where we all want to get to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
And, uh, you know, having self-love, loving ourselves allows us to love other people more. And uh, like we were talking about earlier in the, in the show, I know, for example, I, uh, as do many people, you know, I struggled with being able to love myself. And yet self-love is so important for being able to have any kind of good relationship. You need to be able to love yourself first and you need to be able to uh, recognize your own needs, prioritize your own needs, ask for what you ask for what you need so that you can be filled up. You can kind of put on your own oxygen mask first, so to speak, so that you can be available emotionally for other people. Um, and uh, I think it'll make you more sincere and more genuine in your relationships too. If, if you've gone through the work of actually figuring out how to be comfortable with what it is you want. Right, right. It's really difficult to serve or, you know, to, to be nice to and give service to, because in relationship we serve each other, you know, in, in relationships there's lots of doing for one another. And it's frustrating then if you're in a relationship where you're trying to make them happy, but they don't really know what they want. Right. Sure. Sure. Or if you are in relationship and maybe you don't know what you want or you don't feel like you can ask for what you want, but, um, but you want to make the other person happy so that you are getting kind of the, the love that you think that you need because you're not, you're not giving yourself love. If you, if, if your only sources of love are external to you, then you're going to be in trouble because it's like, if that source can be cut off, then you're going to constantly feel vulnerable and you're going to want to kind of manipulate the situation so that you constantly get whatever supply it is that you feel like you need. Right. right, right. Um, so, so the, the, I guess the opposite of that would be uh, you know, being, you know, more, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Enduring. Yeah. Ha right. Having a more, a more reliable structure that can navigate through life's challenges where your circumstances change a lot, you know, depending on the specific set of circumstances might work for, a while. Oh, you mean like like depending on an outside source? Yeah, I mean you can probably manipulate the situation for a while, but it, ultimately it doesn't feel good anyway. You know, mm. it's it's not. Uh, it doesn't take the place of like real love. And I think like like self love, and then also I, I link that to like divine love, like div like mm. love from the higher self, or like link to love from the creator, you know, like that love with that comes from a source that's not, um, you know, something that like an outside person or, you know, outside circumstance in the world that can change. <clears throat> like receiving sunshine with gratitude. Yeah. Well, explain that a little bit more. Well, you know, Okay, so I'm a man of Northern European origin. It might show a little bit. And so I have a touchy relationship with sunlight right you and, tend to be sensitive to the sun so there's a lot of times i go out and i'm really hostile to the sunlight and i can feel myself becoming hard on my skin and being like ah no not this but then there are some days when i'm able to just sit there relax and really imagine that sunlight going through the top of my head down into my center and it warms me and it feels great and i don't get sunburned i don't know quite what the difference is but i imagine like receiving divine love as being quite similar to receiving sunshine and being okay with it and just loving the sun. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and having harmony with, with the sun and sunlight. <laughs> and, and of course it's an ancient symbol of the divine for most cultures. It's the first God. Right. Well, the, you could think of the earth, I think. Well, sure. That's true too. Yeah. Uh, anyway, a that's a typical a guy thing to say. Yeah. Well, that's a separate, <laughs> separate discussion, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, if we can have real, like divinely sourced self-love, then it's an infinite loop. It's not, you know, it's, there's no, um, you can't deplete that source. It just, it can go on and on and on. So, uh, that you're going to be constantly renewed in the process and you can constantly you can give 
and have a good flow back and forth, uh, you know, with whatever you're giving to, it can come back, but you are constantly being filled from the divine, from your higher self um, and or the divine, however you want to look at that, I think. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it sure does. Okay. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, that's really the key to staying juicy is, um, you know, I think there has to be flow, you know, self-love. Um, well, I, you know, one of the things I wrote down again from this from this vision was, you know, that self-love is the key to staying juicy and keeping, and keeping my heart juicy and alive and well. And I think there is something about that that flow, you know, giving and receiving love, but having it be a, a good flow, um, you know, and ultimately linked to the higher self and the divine that, so that you stay juicy and alive. Um, I think if you let yourself get stagnant, you know, by like walling off your emotions, you know, like going into the iciness or allowing yourself to be so depleted you know, like over giving, you know, not taking into account your own needs that, you know, you shatter or if you're just kind of myopic in that kind of bruised state, then it's not, um, uh, you're not staying juicy. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> I'm hearing a lot of talk here about balance. This sounds like a lot of things about balance and flow. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Which I think is interesting that um, one of the metaphors for this vision for you was a frog. Yeah. Because if you think about where a frog lives, mm -hmm. it, well, do it doesn't just live on the land. It doesn't just live under the water, but it's comfortable in both places. Right. But typically the frog sits half in and half out of the water. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Experiencing the flow from the air above, the thin, rarefied element of air, and then the thick, juicy element of water. Right. And mixes those together. Right. Well, and water is a sim symbolically, you know, it's a symbol of emotion. You know, it's a mm -hmm. symbol of, you know, emotions, of course, are linked with the heart. And we're talking about, you know, healing the heart, you know, healing our e emotional nature. Um, and I think being able to, you know, link with the divine and basically provide our own supply, so to speak. But we can't just like... I think it would be a mistake to just keep the focus on ourselves. I think we have to also, you know, also have that, that ebb and flow with life around us, you know, and, and loving other people, you know, sharing love basically and allowing, you know, giving love and allowing it to come back to us. And in that process, that's where the juice is. That's what keeps us alive. So looks like we're almost to the end of the show. Uh, I hope you've, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you uh, feel free to email us, give us some feedback, let us know what you learned. We'd love to hear from you. You can uh, email me at una at unadrake.com. That's U-N-A at U-N-A-D-R-A-K-E dot com. You can go to my website, unadrake.com. Uh, you can read more about me and my work there. You can um read blog posts. Uh, you can email me through my website if that's easier for you. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And of course, stay juicy. Um, thanks and uh, see you next time. You've been listening to Your Juicy Love with me, Una Drake. Tune in each month as Dr. Pat and I co-host together creating juicy conversations and every second Monday at 12 p.m. on Transformation Talk Radio. I interview amazing guests and you'll learn how to transform your relationships so you can stay juicy. To learn more about me or to listen to past shows, visit my website at unadrake.com. This show's audio was via a Skype call. 